Hi to everyone who's saying hello to me right now. Thank you so much. We're really happy to have you here. So I'm actually going to be starting with thanking the supporters of this book. I'm sorry many of you have had to download the book online, which is a beautiful way to have the version of this book. Um, but one of the other ways that you can be someone who receives this book is once we open the museum back up, right now, Labor, Motherhood, and Art in 2020, the exhibition that this book was created in tandem with, will reopen one day. We're not sure just, just when yet, but it will reopen. And then you can sign up to be one of the 800 recipients of this book. Um, so please come into the, um, into the gallery and sign up. Lenka will also tell you how you might be able to do that online if you're not able to physically come in. But I'm gonna say thank you to those who have contributed to this book. So thank you to the generous donors who have supported to make this publication possible. Those donors are Seth Amarin, Penn Callen, Sarah Erskine and John Green, the Ann Jarvis Society of Wet Nurses, Wanda Konaki, Cliff Leventhal, Kathleen Irvin Loglin, Neon McAvoy, Suzanne Weiss, Judy Wilcott and Lawrence Miller, Francis H. Williams, Carly Will Wilmans, and Gary Wiss. The publication of this labor was made on the occasion of Labor, Motherhood, and Art in 2020 for the University Art Museum at New Mexico State University. This exhibition was co-curated by Marissa Sage and Laurel Nakadati. This exhibition was also supported by the Community Foundation of Southern New Mexico, the Devastali Family Foundation Fund, the Southwest Border Cultural Institute, the Friends of the University Art Museum, the George and Lucy Gray Endowed Art Fund, the Department of, the, of Art at New Mexico State University, the College of Arts and Sciences. It's with deep appreciation that, the, that we had the support of Kathleen Clark Gallery and Anton Sugner. I want to say thank you to both of them who are here today. Catherine, thank you for making this. And Anton, thank you for making this project possible. Without you two, this would not have happened. And I want to make a special thanks to Erin Anderson, um, Debbie Clayton, Jane Clayton, and a big special thank you to someone who I just also came in, who are Amu and Rama Devastali. Um, if, if any of you came to the opening of Labor, Motherhood, and Art in 2020, you will know that our hall that the Museum of, uh, is within is Devastali Hall. Thank you so much, Amu and Rama, for everything that you do for us and for making this publication happen. It means the world to us. Two thirty a.m. Child cries in her room and comes to sleep in my bed. Eight a.m. Wake up, prepare and eat breakfast. Nine a.m. Clean breakfast leftovers from the floor. Ten a.m. Try to read a text for, for a master de master's degree class while child plays. 11.30 a.m. Prepare lunch. 12 p.m. Serve and eat lunch. 1 p.m. Walk with child to school. 1.15 p.m. Go to studio. 1.45 p.m. Work on art. 3 p.m. Meet with a client for a freelance job. 4 p.m. Back working on art. 5.45, leave studio to get my child from school. 6 p.m. Leave school with child and walk to the grocery store. Get home from grocery store. 6.50 p.m., start cooking dinner. 7.30 p.m., serve and eat dinner. 8 p.m., play. 9 p.m., take and give shower. 10.30 p.m., lay in bed with child. 11 p.m., child is asleep. I get, up, I get out of her bed to do computer stuff. 11.45 p.m., go to bed. Oh, I lost the screen, hold on one second, sorry. This is an incomplete list. 4.30 a.m. Wake up, try to go back to sleep. 
6.35 a.m. Alarm goes off. Check monitor. A, two and a half years old, still asleep. It snooze. 6.45 a.m. Alarm goes off. Check monitor. A, still asleep. Get up to pee. Go back to bed. 6.53 a.m. Alarm goes off. Turn off alarm. 6.58 a.m. Brush teeth. Wash face. Get dressed. 7.07 a.m. Open my bedroom door. 7.10 a.m. Open A's bedroom door. Raise the shades. Turn on one light. Hand him big bunny and bird. 7.20 a.m. Give A milks, yogurt pouches. Put away clean dishes. Wash dirty dishes left in sink overnight. Rinse out coffee maker. Fill Britta water pitcher. Wipe down counter. Rinse sink. Gather laundry. 7.30 a.m. Me. Are you pooping? A. Yes, squeeze it. I put the kettle on. 7.35 a.m. Tape together paper airplane. Put load of laundry in washer. 7.40 a.m. Empty kitchen garbage. Turn off kettle. Make oatmeal. Pour juice for myself. Drink one sip. Wipe down counter. A. Need more milks. I bring him more milks. A. Need pine cone. I hand him the pine cone. 8.07 a.m. Cut fruit and nectarine for my oatmeal. Set out A's oatmeal on coffee table. Start to eat my oatmeal. Rescue small toy dog from far side of crib three times. 8.23 a.m. Take vitamins. 8.40 a.m. Brush my teeth, change my clothes, dress A and change his diaper. Make A's toast and gather his fresh fruit snacks. Put his oatmeal in fridge. Put sunscreen on myself. Rescue A from capsizing in giant Tupperware boat. 8.55 a.m. Set wash clothes on laundry rack to dry. Put sunscreen on A. Comfort A's foot, which bonked on his big boat. 9.15 a.m. Take A on bike ride. 9.30 a.m. Visit Firehouse in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. Look at lots of trucks. 10.15 a.m. Ride it away from Firehouse on Nelson Street. So many trees and no cars. 10.30 a.m. Push A in swings in McCarran Park. 10.45 a.m. We sing duet of Will the Circle Be Unbroken while A sing, swings. A plays on playground. We hold hands when walking. 11.15 a.m. I ride home. 11.45 a.m. Make myself an iced chai latte. Turn toaster oven on. Ready mini quiches to bake for A's lunch. Empty bathroom trash can. Replenish hand soaps. Try to fold clothes and put back in Tupperware bin. Put quiches in toaster oven. 12 noon. A eats his oatmeal cold from the fridge. We say, bye bye oatmeal. 12.09 p.m. Serve quiches. Gather next load of laundry. 12.15 p.m. Rearrange wet laundry on rack. Remove plate of massacred quiches from windowsill. A was cutting them with his bobby pin tools. Me, applesauce? A, yes. I open an applesauce. A, milk. 1 p.m. Diaper change. Get A in his room ready for nap. Change into nap pants, lower curtains. Sing Tender Shepherd two times, holding A in my lap in rocking chair. Me. Dear God, look after this boy. Put A in crib, kiss top of his head, closed door. 1.20 p.m. Make my salad. Have 45-minute conversation on telephone with my divorce lawyer. 2.35 p.m. Eat salad. Watch 20 minutes of Netflix. 3 p.m. Pick up A from nap. 3.15 p.m. Change diaper, turn on toaster oven to make mini waffles for snack. Short video call with Nani and Grandpa, Greg, Aunt Anna, and TN cousins. Fold clothes and put back in Tupperware, slide under bed. I use the bathroom, 4 p.m., I use the bathroom. Make more mini waffles, serve applesauce. 4.25 p.m., sit on couch for 30 minutes with A in my lap. We look at post office magazine full of images of stamps. We discuss the Sesame Street, which he has never seen, characters pictured on their stamps. I sing C is for cookie and rubber ducky many times. 4.55 p.m. Put cream on boo-boo. Play big boat coming into pier in living room. 5.20 p.m. Begin making dinner. A helps. Fire so strong, so happy. Eats stir fry veggies, shrimp, rice. Pop. Snap peas open for A. 6.10 p.m. Wash dinner dishes, sweep rice from floor, say several times, A, the broom goes on the floor, not in the air. 
6.15 p.m. Play Anne Murray's cover of Animal Crackers seven times in a row. Dance with A. Play one Willie Nelson song, one Eagle song. Play Carrie Underwood's Jesus Take the Wheel three times. Stand in corner on A's instruction and let the people sing it. <laughs> 6.45 p.m. A's father comes home. 7 p.m. Finish doing dinner dishes. 7.13 p.m. Say family prayer and do nighttime blessings with A and his father. Kiss the top of A's head. Tell him I love him and we'll see him tomorrow. Close his bedroom door. Move his father's mattress into the living room. Close the bedroom door. Put my shoes in front of it. Sit on the bed, which A's father turn, watch A's father turn out the light on the baby monitor. 7.20 p.m. Email babysitter, RE, tomorrow's schedule. Put Tupperware under bed. Schedule Uber ride to courthouse for tomorrow morning. Notice I am exhausted and dehydrated. Feel this in my marrow. Eat blueberry, spinach, cashew, lara bar. 8 p.m. Take shower, shave legs. 8.25 p.m. Brush teeth and floss. 8.30 p.m. Watch five minutes of Netflix. 8.35 p.m. Receive email from lawyers. Review and revise. 9.05 p.m. Send revisions to lawyers. 9.15 p.m. Send additional revisions to lawyers. 9.25 p.m. Have short phone meeting with lawyers. 9.26 p.m. Take an antidepressant. Go to the bathroom. 9.40 p.m. Watch 20 minutes of Netflix. 10 p.m. Go to the bathroom. 10.09 p.m. Turn out my light. Listen to 10-minute guided meditation. Lay awake for at least one hour, maybe more. Zero o'clock. Continue finishing some work on my computer. 12.30. Take a break and search for a textbook online for daughter. 1.30, back to work. 2.10, brush teeth. 2.20, wake up son to go to the toilet. 2.25, go to bed. 5.10, son throws up in bed. Get up and take him to the toilet, check his temperature. He has a fever of 37.8 degrees centigrade. Give medicine to son and clean up the bed. Put son back to sleep, then daughter wakes up and asks questions. Everyone back to sleep. 5.40. Son gets up to go to the toilet, then back to sleep. 9.30, daughter wakes up and I tell her to go play something by herself. 10.10, 10. son wakes up to go to the toilet, check his temperature again, he still has a fever. His stomach is a bit hurt and feeling hungry. Give son a banana to eat and then some medicine. 10.30, check with domestic helper if she's feeling all right. She got food poisoning from her friend's food yesterday. Find medicine for her and make sure she knows what to eat and what not to eat. 10.40, Call doctor and make appointment for son. Ask son to go to daddy's room and sleep because daughter is making noise and non-stop talking. Prepare breakfast for daughter. 10.50, turn on computer and start working. Call the printing company to check on the birthday banner for son's birthday. 10.55, son throws up again. 11.05, son and daughter rest in daddy's bed and watch TV so that daughter will not bother her little brother. 11.25, get dressed, prepare clothes for daughter and son. Bookstore called and confirmed son's textbook order. 11.40, drive and take son to see the doctor with daughter. 12.50, drive daughter to summer writing class. 1.05, arrive at summer writing class and realize the class doesn't start until 1.30. 1.10, got some crackers on my way out. Drive son home. 1.25, arrive home, give crackers and some medicine to son. 1.30, my mom arrives to help. Check emails and start working on computer. 150, lunch is ready. Eat lunch in front of the computer and continue working. 230, drive and pick up daughter. Arrive back home. 320, arrive back home. 340, back to the computer and work. 530, son says he has a headache. Give him some medicine and massage in his head. 550, back to work as he's resting on the sofa. 630, dinner. 710, son throws up again. 7.30, try to feed son some food and some medicine. Read eight o'clock, read book with daughter. Son complains his stomach is hurting again. 8.20, watch the news with son and daughter. Nine o'clock, son brushes teeth and gets ready to go to bed. 9.10, daughter brushes teeth and gets ready to go to bed. 9.20, put both son and daughter to bed. Put bucket and water next to son's bed. 9.25, back to the computer and work. 10.15, son is out of his bedroom and says he can't sleep. Lay down with him in his bed. 
10.39, back to the computer and work. 10.50, husband comes back home from work. 11 o'clock, shower. 11.30, back to the computer and work. Do you want me to continue? Yeah, okay. Um, 638, wake up to water, ask, I'm sorry, wake up to daughter asking if it's really morning yet. Convince her to lay down and snuggle for a while longer. 738, finally rise out of bed. Breakfast options are special K or raisin bran. Just saw a notification on Instagram for a residency opportunity that I've been waiting to open up. I'll apply today. Not sure what else daughter and I will do today for entertainment. I'm now five days overdue. 741. Meltdown due to no more milk and fridge and thus no cereal. Looks like grocery shopping will be on the to-do list today. 846, out of the shower, sitting naked on the bed, scrolling through social media while daughter jabbers in the kitchen. She's not allowed TV today because of a massive tantrum unless she cleans her room. She doesn't realize this is, much, this is, this is as much a punishment for me as it is for her. 1039, laundry is done, daughter and I are sitting in the studio. I'm organizing test tiles while she feeds me imaginary blueberry and strawberry pancakes. Then 46, feel a contraction, probably a false alarm, hopefully not. 1124, it was definitely a false alarm. 1254, ham sandwiches for lunch, then everyone is off to the midwife for an overdue ultrasound and non-stress test. Daughter clarifies it's important she has a chance to tell all the nurses her name when we get there. 514. Back from the doctor, the baby boy still has plenty of fluid and a strong heartbeat, so he will continue to stew. Grocery shopping didn't happen. The daughter is happily playing with the cat before the brewing thunderstorm really hits. Cake and bake Costco lasagna for dinner it is. 6.56. A few minutes of quiet while husband and daughter are outside in the front yard, sitting on the couch waiting for lemon bars to come out of the oven before I do anything else. 7.28. Reading on the porch while guarding the lemon bars on the railing from the dog and cat. 9.07, daughter is asleep. Book choices tonight include The Very Hungry Caterpillar and I Love You Through and Through. 9.59, we sit down for an evening show. Part of the sweet battle is keeping my husband from squishing my stomach too much as he tries to hear the baby. 11.03, before we go to bed, husband goes to check on daughter and nearly trips in fright from her standing awake right behind the door. We both agree that nothing is scarier than unexpected small people in dark places. Then we discover his fright also caused her fright and she unfortunately peed on the floor where he found her. Clean up ensues. 11.21, all in bed, though daughter will most likely join us early in the morning. Zero hour, I sleep, two o'clock. I wake up to close the window and cover my daughter with quilt. 4.40, my daughter calls me. I agree with her with murmuring voice. 5.40, I wake up again and am, and am enchanted with my dream, so I want to continue. I keep dreaming and discover further part of a dream. 6.40, I wake up breastfeeding, hugging my daughter as this time she came to my bed. I talk to her. I prepare my homeopathic medicine. I do my very quick exercise routine with a bit of yoga. I shower. I observe my thought each time I am showering if my child is okay. As I haven't called gas service yet to check if there is everything working well after repair that I managed to have done two weeks ago. I cook and eat millet and miso together, miso soup together with child and prepare gluten-free also for kindergarten. Eight, eight o'clock. I open the door to my ex, welcome him with kiss and ask him to wait for child. I make my bed and brush my teeth. I kiss our daughter and wish them a good day. 8.10, I go to work. On my way, I receive a flower for supporting flower sellers' rights. 8.20, I receive a book by Maria Paprazica and a gift for my child from Kitty Olivia. 
I am in the gallery and I go to the refugee center as I create two different artists at the same time. I continue my self-run residency started in France while I, I am in a car. I eat salad prepared by an artist. 1730. I am with my daughter earlier as my ex asked me if I can do it. I go with her immediately to the gallery to finish work, give her a gift from Katie. I go out as she changed her mood totally. I can't get to her with words. I hug her and say nothing, walking with her holding hands. 1745. I enter with her to Veg Risto to veg risto. I order her favorite pita and juice. I do not order for myself. I chill out. I skip brainstorm for new art project. 1830, I go home and see my boyfriend walking to my place. I hug him and kiss and ask for changing plans for now. I do shopping. I negotiate with child. 1920, I check if I'd started bleeding. 1930, I cook and eat rice and eggplant sauce with child. 1940, artist in residence comes to bake a chocolate cake in my oven. I watch this performance with child breaking chocolate. 2010, I play foam with child in bath. 2030, I read her good night stories. She tells me her day, I almost fall asleep. 2100, I hear the second artist came. 2015, child is hungry. I give her banana. 2130, she falls asleep. 2135, I open terrace with artists. We do salad and talk. I light candles. 2200, I open the door to my boyfriend. We go all together on terrace, eat and drink and talk about Querying reality. I give blankets and artificial fur as it gets colder. We watch the cake in the oven. I take child from the floor and put her back on her mattress. 2350, I feel I get my period. I am bleeding. Zero hour, I wash blueberries and we eat. Zero 40 minutes, I take shower. One o'clock, I fall asleep next to my boyfriend. 12.58 a.m. Stayed up on a rare late night alone, sipping a Campari spritz. I worked on and submitted a writing project, then looked for some furniture to put into the playroom. Some moms and I fought hard for in our apartment building and won. I should have gone to bed hours ago, and I know I'll pay for the late night tomorrow. But long, quiet, productive nights like this make me feel like the old pre-baby me again. I miss her now and then. I can hear my son and husband exhale loudly from time to time from the bedroom one room over. And I'm thankful that now that the baby finally sleeps through most nights. 1.07 a.m brush my chompers, and climb quietly into our big family bed. 7.37 a.m. Baby rustles and wakes me up. Or maybe I rustled and woke him up. Either way, we both wake up. I tried to nudge my husband to go make him breakfast, but he said he was too tired. He got the iPad and I gave it, and gave it to me to set up for W. I put on Sesame Street and tried to fall back to sleep and instead started reading the awful news. After that, there's no way I'm falling back to sleep. 7.50 a.m. My son cuddles up beside me and nurses for a couple of minutes while I read. He asks for breakfast, so I get up and make eggs and tortilla chips while he plays with toys. I make myself a bowl of cereal, toasted O's. He wants cereal now too. He wants it like I eat it, with cinnamon and chia seeds sprinkled on top. 8.23 a.m. Texting with friend about what to do with kids today. Should we go to a water park, a ferry ride, butterfly conservatory? 9 a.m. 
Husband comes into kitchen and gives son a kiss, grabs a banana, says he's going to work, and gives me a kiss and splits. 9, 10 a.m. I do the dishes and clean up kitchen. As I do, I think about how my husband used to leave around 10 for work and how I'd still usually be asleep in bed. The olden days. 9, 17 a.m. I talk to my non-mom friend on the phone for a few minutes. My son follows me around with a can of Play-Doh for me to open for a few minutes saying words I don't understand until I realize he's trying to get me to open the Play-Doh. 9.20 a.m. I end the call with my friend and sit on the floor next to my son. We play Play-Doh till 9.30 then get changed and ready to go to the playground and meet our friends. 9.45 a.m., out the door with a giant backpack full of stuff, stroller, sunscreen, hat, change of clothes, water shoes and sneakers, snacks, towel, etc. It looks like I'm moving versus taking a little jaunt to the park. 10 a.m., we meet our friends on the street on the way and all walk to the park together to play in the sprinklers. We pass a barking dog. My son starts crying and refuses to walk. Get into the stroller or move so I can carry the 35 pound kiddo in the hot sun for six blocks till he calms down. The whole time I talk to him about dogs and how the dog won't hurt him and how he's safe if I'm nearby because I'm his protector. It's the same speech. I always give him when he's scared, and I just hope I'll never have to really be tested on that spiel, or that if I am, I can prove victorious. 10.10 10 a.m., we arrive at playground. There is scaffolding covering half the park due to construction, and about a thousand kids are there with a day camp, realistically, more like 30, who are older and bigger than our kids. I'm on edge wondering how much trouble I'd get into if I body check a tween to keep my kid from getting knocked over. I try to keep him off to the side, away from the crowd. I swear, half my day spent being pissed off in a playground. 10, 20 a.m. A tween climbing near where my kid is playing almost kicks my child in the head. The counselor is maybe a year older than the kid comes over and tells him to get down. I'm impressed. The group of older kids leave soon after a park full of moms share a sigh of relief. 10.35 a.m., a raggedy looking guy barges into the playground and dem demands money from my friend. She says no. He leaves the park screaming. My son is nearby playing with flowers. I'm simultaneously nervous about signs saying the garden was treated with rat poison and the raving maniac. 11 a.m. We eat lunch and share snacks with our friends. 11.52 a.m. Home for a nap time. Shoes off, hands washed, wet clothes removed, diaper changed, new dry clothes on, lie down for a nap. He goes out like a light. I sit and write for an hour till he starts to scream for me. 1.12 p.m., he's up and tired, but I don't want him to try to nap longer because it makes bedtime harder if his nap is too long. He has a snack of crackers and cheese and carrots, and we build a giant train village. 2.30 p.m., we hurry over to a speech therapy appointment. It's about a mile walk away, and it's humid and hot. We get there, and they say there is no appointment today. It's now on Tuesdays. I checked my email to see if they notified me. They did, but I missed it. I got an iced coffee and he gets a small cup of ice cream to compensate for the heat and my mistake. 2.58 p.m., we walk home slowly. He insists on pushing the stroller. He continuously pushes it towards oncoming foot traffic and I'm constantly saying, watch out. And sorry, if I make him stop, he lies down on the sidewalk and cries. 3.36 p.m. We get home and go through the routine again. 
shoes off, hands washed. He plays with his trains while I tidy up a little, and then I flop onto the couch with my phone to pursue social media for a bit. 4.15 p.m. I encourage us to go back outside for a little while before dinner. We go downstairs to a nearby playground with a pared down operation consisting of a handful of water balloons and a few cups. His water bottle, my keys, sunglasses, and cell phone. I leave him in his street clothes versus changing to bathing suit. He romps around in the sprinkler. I fill up a couple of water balloons for him in the fountain. He picks up broken plastic balloon remnants and tries to blow them up. It's a solid 45, mi 45 minutes of me repeating no. And we don't put things we pick up on the ground in our mouths. And put that down. And go throw that away. Finally, around 5, we head in for dinner. 5.03 p.m., inside, shoes off, hands washed. He plays with trains while I prepare dinner. It's usually always the same. Steamed broccoli or carrots, some form of chicken like a hot dog or chicken meatballs with ketchup and a grain, like rice or lentils or pasta. When it's done, I call my son and he comes quickly for dinner. He must be hungry. Usually he pretends he didn't hear me. 5.25 p.m., it's a typical dinner. He eats while I sit nearby and chat with him. I ask him questions about the day or his food. Sometimes I sing or read him a book. Sometimes I chatter mindlessly while checking email on my phone. He cleans his plate and asks for a cookie. I give him one. 5.45 p.m., his dad comes home. We decide to take a walk. We leave and saunter over to the new pier park they built near where we live. It's only a few weeks old and already it's trashed. There are people who've appeared to build little homes and huts all over it. Loud music blasting, garbage strewn about, the smell of weed in the air, people drinking and smoking cigarettes. It's sad. No security or supervision. It's nice that it's being used, but people just don't seem to care about their community or their environment or understand how that behavior affects others. I, I leave feeling kind of bummed out. 6.25 p.m. We arrive back home. Daddy gives our son a bath and does the bedtime routine with brushing teeth, diaper and rash cream, PJs, reads two to three books, and turns on the sound machine while I do my New York Times. Seven minute workout, pour a big glass of water, brush my own teeth and get into PJs. 7.18 p.m. Daddy calls me to take over where I lie beside my son in the dark until he falls asleep while he goes to make us dinner. Sometimes it takes 10 minutes for my son to fall asleep. Sometimes it takes a, an hour. When his breathing slows and becomes evenly paced, I know he's asleep and I usually skip out. Except tonight I'm tired. My husband texts me to ask if I'll be coming out. I text him back no, and a few minutes later, I fall asleep. 10.20 p.m., I wake up. My husband is now beside me asleep. The sound machine and AC are blasting soothingly. I get up, pee, take a walk around the apartment, shut off the lights my husband's left on, and make sure the door is locked. It's not, so I lock it. I slink back into bed and fall back to sleep after a short time. 12.04. I finished my wine. I finished my wind down yoga, used the bathroom, and checked the dryer for bunny number two. Daughter threw, up, threw it up on Saturday. I washed it four times. It smells mostly fine, but I might see if I can buy a new one tomorrow. 12.09, I plug in phone, turn on sound machine, and tell husband he's snoring and roll him over. I lay down in bed. 3.53, I wake up, check the clock, and go back to bed. 7.30, I wake up, 
check the baby monitor. She's asleep, so I go back to sleep. 7.49, I wake up, resolve to get up, but fall back asleep. 7.53, I wake up and check the baby monitor. I watch her as she stands up in the crib and looks around. She finds bunny number one and lie, lays down. She starts rubbing his tag and goes back to sleep. 7.58, I turn off my 8 a.m. alarm and scroll through Instagram. I check my email and the weather. 8.10, I get out of bed. 8.18, I make breakfast. I forget bunny number two was out. I put him back in the diaper bag and see an old packed lunch. I clean that out and get back to making breakfast. 8.38, I get dressed and I make the bed. 8.41, I wake up daughter and hand her a banana when she sits up. She eats it quietly, then says, no poop, to indicate she does not want her diaper changed. She asks for her dada several times and I tell her he's at work, but he will see, but we will see him later. I pick her up and she cries about not wanting her diaper changed. So I sing her a made up song about her bunny. We eat breakfast. She plays with her new cup, explaining, exclaiming, I did it. Every time she successfully opens the cup top, she asks me to put on the goodbye song. I do. 9.05, the sitter shows up. Daughter screams in delight for sitter and shows off her new cup. We all sing the hello song, greeting sitter, the cats, da-da, the new cup. I clean daughter up and I clear the table. I tell the daughter we have to brush teeth, and she runs into the living room, so I threaten to brush my teeth without her. She runs to the bathroom yelling, wait. I put on teeth brushing song and brush her teeth. She insists sitter brush her teeth. They go to the living room to play. 9.20, I pick out clothes for daughter and bring them into the living room. I realize she needs a diaper change. She loudly protests and I pick her up. Sitter reads her a book and I change her diaper. We get her changed and dressed. 9.38, I sneak out of the house because if daughter sees me leave, she will melt down. I hear her yell, outside, and I close the door. I walk down the street to a coffee shop, order a smoothie and sit down. 9.52, I Facebook chat with my husband, check emails and work on my syllabus and supply list. I hear a baby cry and look around, even though I know it isn't daughter. Baby cries louder, and I think about going home early. Sitter is here until 12. 11.35, I decide to pack up and walk home. On the way, I walk to the toy store to check for a new white bunny, but they only have pink, purple, and gray. I arrive home. Daughter runs toward me and gives me a hug. I ask her if she had fun with Sitter. She says no, but she always says no, so I tell Sitter not to take offense. I get daughter a snack, goldfish. Sitter leaves. Daughter stands quietly outside of the open bathroom door while I use the toilet. She periodically comes in to check on me. When I come out, she says, Mama, pee, and Mama makes a hand washing sign. Tell her I did. She declares, all done, fish. When she's done and asks for more, I decide to make lunch. I offer blueberries, but she declines. She points to my guacamole and asks what it is. I tell her and she says, no try, even though I didn't ask her to. When I eat some blueberries, she begins to eat them. I tell her, we have to share. And she says, no, then feeds me one and proceeds to eat the rest. She declares, mama, all done when my plate is clear. I clear the little table while daughter plays with her bus. She hugs my legs and we go to her room. I pick her up to change her diaper and she screams that she wants to read book. I tell her, we will read books after I change her diaper. This does not console her. We choose books to read. After we read books, she says for ma, so I nurse milk, so I nurse her. 128. I look through my phone as she nurses. Daughter falls asleep while nursing. I unlatch her from my nipple and put her pacifier into her mouth. I stand up slowly 
and walk her over to the crib. I lay her in the crib and gently pull my arm out from underneath her head. I get the monitor and check it. I set things up on my desk nap length studio time. I get my water glass from the living room and see lunch left over so I clear the table again. In the kitchen, I load the dishwasher and prep things for dinner. 2.02, I sit down for studio time. I draw and listen to a podcast. I do a short yoga video before nap time is over. 3.46, daughter is up. I go get her. The first thing she says to me is, Elsa. I pick her up and ask for a hug. She says no and pushes me away. She goes and sits on the dining room floor and asks for her snack. I sit down with her. She drapes her blanket over me, dances around the room, hands me her snack, and beckons the cat to come down from the dining room table. She asks for water and dribbles it onto the floor. Mm -hmm. I decide we need to go outside. I tell her we have to change her diaper before we go outside, and she screams, no, repeatedly as I carry her into her room. We finally get out of the house. Our neighbor comes out and draws with us. She and I chat while daughter plays with the water table. I draw a crab with chalk. Daughter dumps water on it. Husband comes home from work and offers to go inside and make dinner. I get a text from husband that dinner is done. I get her hands washed and set her down for dinner. Daughter yells, no, each time husband and I try to talk. Husband and I have an argument. He plays with daughter while I clean up. I take a shower. Daughter comes into the bathroom several times during my shower, and each time she leaves, she says, bye, see you soon, and closes the door. I get out of the shower. I go to the bedroom, close the door, and wonder how long I can get away with just sitting on the bed. Husband knocks on the door. I get dressed and come out. Husband and I have a talk about the argument. We come to get my daughter's belly and she laughs. We put her down and she says she wants to play. We draw on her easel with dry erase markers. She tells me, draw Dada and the cats. We FaceTime with grandfather. Daughter runs back and forth to show him how fast she is. We end the call with grandfather and take a bath. Daughter lines up for phone letters on the shower wall. Daughter says she wants Dada to brush teeth when I try to brush them. 818, I, husband puts her PJs and sleep sack while she plays with a singing toy. Daughter picks out books and we read them. Daughter nurses, and I look through my phone. We finish nursing. I put daughter in her crib, sing her along, and then we blow out the light together. 8.50, I leave her room and sit down on the couch. Husband asks if I want to watch a movie. I say, okay, and he puts it on. 9.11, we pause the movie to check some facts we were debating. 10.31, we stop the movie to resume another night. Husband goes to bed. I respond to a text and end up scrolling through Instagram and Facebook. I pick up my book and start reading. I put down my book and go brush my teeth and start my wind down yoga before bed. 8.40, lying in bed listening to husband and second daughter, M, getting ready for work. Unexpected roadworks have begun right outside our house, so the noise of drilling and our dog barking at this made me has made for an irritating start to the day. I was to be only mourning for the next seven when I could sleep late. Feeling anxious about having committed too many projects, washing machine has been acting up so I need to take laundry into town, but instead I'm prolonging everything by lying here, even though it's beautiful and sunny day. Ask Sun G to retrieve, retrieve recycling bin so I can rate it for children's art workshop supplies, but it's already been collected. Husband leaves in a hurry and blood on shirt, having cut himself shaving. 
get up and throw skirt and shoes on with t-shirt. I slept in, pin up hair and gather baskets of laundry to put in car. Sun G wants to spend vouchers he has given for birthday on special online offer for Alexa or similar device. Cat following me around as he knows I'll feed him. Feed Cat, 920. Drive times to nearest town and public honor at, accompanied by son, C, who plays Mr. Blue Sky. My ELO on his phone, thus dissipating my anger at the arrogance of road workers, closing the road without notice. Kids are great. Received text from husband to inform me he's arrived at the office without his laptop. I offered to bring it to him when I collect laundry, though the office is in the opposite direction. Daughter one makes me a cup of tea and I eat yogurt before getting back into the car. Son G and C play computer games. Eldest daughter G gets up while daughter L sleeps as usual. 11.15, return from errands. Have had heated words with foreman of roadworks regarding access to our house and not having been warned of diversion. Tar stuck to my shoes as a result, so drove home in just socks. Now hanging vast quantities of laundry while kids watch TV. I can't be bothered to deal with all that as I get tired repeating myself. Also, it's a novelty for them all to have eldest daughter G home and she has just returned from a grueling third semester of college. 11.30, eldest daughter G has rallied the rest to do quick cleanup around the kitchen. I attempt to make various prototypes of craft projects using recycled materials for three days of children's art workshops beginning tomorrow. Thoroughly regret taking this on and wish I could be outside gardening in the sun. or working on numerous personal art projects. Kids don't even question why I am painting plastic bottles and gluing tissue paper to old CDs in the middle of the kitchen. 1400, eat a cheese sandwich too quickly and smarten myself up to get yet another art related workshop where I volunteer to help artist friends put together window displays for an upcoming festival. Kids continue to snack and watch movies and YouTubers. 1420, leave slightly late for workshop, 40 minute drive away, frustrated that I've had to abandon my workshop prep. 1505, arrive at venue to find that only three of us have turned up to work on window displays, including the organizer and her daughter. One more artist arrives shortly after me, and we spend the next couple of hours cutting out paper sil silhouettes. Stop in 1715, stop in supermarket on way to pick up dinner for today and tomorrow, along with daily supplies of milk and snacks, which will be consumed in an instant. Call husband to offer to collect second eldest M, but he already has her, so I head home. 1745, arrive home, kids all content and making the most of their school holidays. I begin prepping dinner, though not sure we'll eat it as husband heads straight out again and with daughter number four, L, who has Kamonji training and second eldest M as she's singing lessons to the young daughter of friends nearby. We live in a very rural area and none of the kids drive yet. 1800, continue to brainstorm ideas on the laptop for things to create with kids as I'm not confident that I have enough plan to fill the two hour sessions. 2000, I eat once we're all home. Fish with salad and potatoes goes down well. I don't have the energy to do all I had planned, but spend time chatting to husband and kids for a while over standard noise level. Usual minor disagreements, but about who loads the dishwasher, etc. Four daughters occupy most of the couch space to watch latest installment of reality TV show. I put some plies into the car for tomorrow and chat with my husband who typically spends a great deal of time on his iPhone as his work is demanding and very much a part of our lives. 
2200, watch a couple of reruns of Seinfeld and chill out. It's in the best, in the past, I've been anxious about events such as tomorrow's workshop as I'm very introverted and don't sleep well. I'm trying to remain calm while husband and kids all offer reassurances. We have fun chatting to all the kids and watching shows with them. 1200. We all start preparing for bed, and I read a couple of pages of a novel just to distract myself for a decent sleep. 12 a.m., reading in bed. 12, 12 a.m., ready to fall asleep, turn off bedside light. 7.30 a.m., first alarm rings. 7.45 a.m., second alarm rings. 7.55 a.m., third alarm rings. 8.05 a.m., fourth alarm rings. 8.05 brush tea, and we had with a fantastic... 12 a.m., reading in bed. 12.12 12 a.m., ready to fall asleep, turn off bedside light. 7.35 a.m., first alarm rings. 7.45 a.m., second alarm rings. 7.55 a.m., third alarm rings. 8.05 a.m., fourth alarm rings. 8.06 a.m., wake up. 8.10 a.m., go to the bathroom, brush teeth, stumble out of bathroom, thinking about what a crazy, wonderful weekend we had with a fantastic Saturday night dinner party that ended in me washing dishes until 5.30 a.m. 8.16 a.m., go to the kitchen, and help with breakfast and lunches for kids. 8.40 a.m., say goodbye to husband and children as they go to summer school and work. 8.45 a.m., respond to text messages, including texts from my director regarding preparation details of our short film, a short story's premiere on Saturday at the LA Shorts International Film Fest, and a text from a new colleague who wants to have a conference call this week for a new project. Send a few work emails, check in on the tasks for the day, 9.15 a.m., go back to bed for a little more sleep. 9.45 a.m., wake up again. 9.50 a.m., make coffee and eat breakfast, quick breakfast. 10.10 a.m., get in the car and drive to physical therapy appointment. 10.30 a.m., arrive at physical thera therapy appointment. 10.55 a.m., grateful to be at physical therapy and feeling better already. 11.45 a.m., leave physical therapy appointment. 11.43 a.m., Go into supermarket next to physical therapy paid to buy milk and bread. 11.50 a.m. Find Old Spice Krekengar deodorant for oldest son who said he wanted deodorant last week, his first deodorant. 11.53 a.m. Decide to buy a jar of organic peanut butter also. 11.57 a.m. Pay for milk, bread, peanut butter, and Old Spice Krekengar deodorant. 11.59 a.m., almost leave behind the container of fruit the physical therapist gave me as a gift, but the gentleman behind me in the line points out to me, and I say, thank you, as I take the package and leave the supermarket. 12.03 a.m., drive home with purchases. 12.18 a.m., arrive home and make sandwiches for kids, lunches, and drink more coffee, this time with milk. 12.31 p.m., leave the house with sandwiches and cookies and fruit from the physical therapist for the kids' lunches and drive to the kids' summer school locations to pick them up. 12.41 p.m., pick up the oldest son who's waiting outside next to the middle school. 12.42 p.m., give the oldest son deodorant. He is so happy. 12.47 p.m., park the car next to the elementary school and pick up the younger two children talk to middle son's new friend and let him know that I texted his mother over the weekend about possibly getting together tomorrow afternoon at the community pool. 12.55 p.m. Drop off three children at the Boys and Girls Club. I give them their sandwiches and other lunch snacks before saying goodbye. I remind them I'll pick them up a little earlier than usual because we have an outing tonight. 1.18 p.m. Arrive at my parents' house to receive a large delivery from, for them. My father is in Vancouver for work and my mother's in Chile with my grandmother because today is her 90th birthday. 1.24 p.m., the delivery truck arrives. 1.33 p.m., while waiting for the delivery men to bring the crates into the house, I write to my colleague in response to her question about when I will be able to send her the work I've promised. 1.40 p.m., I write to my other colleague in response to whether or not we can speak on the phone today 
about an upcoming event we are organizing? The answer is no, but I asked for a response to the long audio message I sent yesterday. 1.43 p.m. I write to my mother-in-law to find out if she and her husband are coming to LA for the weekend to attend our short film premiere. I let her know that I understand if she can't make it and that we'll probably do another screening in the fall. 1.55 p.m. I drive back home. 2.07 p.m. I make myself lunch. 2.17 p.m. I sit down with my lunch to respond to the additional work emails and to work, finally, on the essay I need to finish as soon as possible because my editor is waiting eagerly. 3.45 p.m. I decide that I will not exercise today and instead keep working on my essay. 4.37 p.m. I write a text message to our old babysitter to see if she can babysit on Saturday, which is the short film premiere and also my birthday. I don't tell her that. The other people I contacted are not available to babysit, but I assume it's implied. 4.42 p.m. I write a short and warm birthday message to my grandmother on WhatsApp, and I wish I had remembered to make a little video for her with the kids in the morning. 4.45 p.m. I go to pick up the kids at the Boys and Girls Club. 5.05 p.m. The kids come out and my daughter's new friend is also being picked up, so I meet her mom for the first time and confirm our plans to take the kids to the community pool tomorrow afternoon. 5.15 p.m. I start driving home. 5.18 p.m. I go back to the Boys and Girls Club because my oldest son left his lunch bag and water bottle there. 5.30 p.m. I, I run home and I realize my husband is already home. 5.33 p.m. I tell my husband I'm running late and explain what I had planned to make the kids to eat before we all go out. 5.45 p.m. Start getting ready to go out while my husband feeds the kids dinner. 6.15 p.m. We get in the car and I drive us to the film screening of Steven Spielberg's Raiders of the Lost Ark starring Harrison Ford hosted by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Scientists. Sciences, lo siento. I was invited by my Chilean co colleague who works for the Academy and also produces films. 6.45 p.m. I arrive at the film screening and I enjoy the delicious food and the reception with my husband and kids. 7.05 p.m. I meet some young filmmakers and comedy writers at the reception and I talk about their upcoming projects. I tell them about my premiere on Saturday in North Hollywood. 7.25 p.m. We head upstairs to the theater to take our seats. 7.30 p.m. While our middle son reserved our, us seats in the middle of the theater, he and his brother and sister decide we should sit in the front row, so we move our seats. 7.35 p.m. The introductions begin, which will be followed by a special presentation on visual effects and sound effects for Raiders of the Lost Ark. Alfred Molina, who introduces Ben Burt and Craig Barron, is very funny and the crowd works the crowd. 8.30 p.m. The film finally begins and I'm relieved because the middle child is fidgety. 9.42 p.m. The film is amazing and a restored 35 millimeter edition that was recently printed from the original negatives. I watch my husband and daughter smiling as they watch the film. I'm sitting between my oldest son and my middle son and they're both enraptured. My oldest son whispers things to me every once in a while. 10.30 p.m. The film ends and everyone is tired. 10.38 p.m. After going to the restroom, I ask my oldest son to take a quick photo of me next to the film poster. Meanwhile, my husband is tired and asks to go home. 10.40 p.m. I drive home and the children are squirrely. My husband is at the end of his rope, it seems. 11 p.m. We arrive home. 11.15 p.m. The oldest and youngest kids are in bed. The middle one is eating yogurt and tension is brewing with my husband. 11.21 p.m. My husband says something about how many days an empty Amazon box is going to sit on the floor. 11.22 p.m. I do not resist the urge to say something in my defense. 11.28 p.m. The middle child goes to bed. 11.34 p.m. An ar argument begins to erupt with my husband. 11.39 p.m. I'm trying to stay calm and not react or respond to his tirade about how tired he is and how our family schedule is too full and too demanding. 11.42 p.m. I lament the fact that I am not a more sage-centered, wise wife. I want to kill my husband. I decide my husband is deeply confused about how amazing I am. I plot a million acts of revenge against my husband. I clean things in the kitchen. I decide to make myself a gin and ginger beer, an improvised version of gin and tonic. 
I talk to myself in an attempt to distract my Chilean ferociousness from unleashing in volcanic South American Edward Albee splendor. 11.53 p.m., I take out my laptop and start working. 5.11, wake up to Nurse C, 32 months. Take the puppy out to go potty. 5.40, bring C back to his toddler bed and nurse him a little more so he can fall asleep. 6.20, C wakes up and nurses again. 6.42, C follows daddy to the kitchen to eat raspberries. Puppy comes and gives me kisses. I meditate. 7.13, get ready for work and get C and M, five, ready to go to the babysitter. 7.57, chase puppy around the front yard to get her back inside. 8.03, finally the kids buckled up with the car, in, up in the car with crumbly waffles, and strawberries in hand. 8.06, arrive at the neighbor's house. 8.13, drive to work. 8.40, sit in the nest to answer emails. 9.01, begin writing airport art master plan. 11.29, eat, date, and walnut bread. Discuss airport art master plan with in-house designer. Touch base with chief curator about airport and art master plan. 11.37, reviews, review phase three deliverable with fellow curator in the office. 12.40, prepare a bagged salad to eat and cut apple to top it off. 12.45, I am notified that an artist has shown up for her meeting. We sit down and discuss the design that she has submitted for a 40 foot by 20 foot site specific hanging sculpture. 1325, sit out in the front on the AstroTurf and eat bagged salad. 1350, return to the nest with my third half a cup of coffee to com complete edits for airport art master plan. 1359, hear the laugh of my old boss from an art gallery and head over to say hello. Chat about her daughter who has had a fever of 105 degrees over the weekend. 1404, return with a handful of gummy bears in hand to complete airport art master plan before a review of the document at 1430. 1437, review the portfolio of an artist doing beadwork and mosaics on the flat surfaces and trophy busts. Send emails. 1445, meet with chief curator and curator to outline next steps for airport art master plan. 1501, meet with a graphic designer to gauge their interest in participating as a designer for the graphics of the airport art master plan. 1515, return emails. 1531, consult with art administrator about the logistics of an upcoming art installation on 719. 1542, contact client's assistant about artwork transportation on 718. 1602, go to a staff meeting. The CEO said we have a birthday this week and I looked behind me even though she was talking about my birthday. 1703, eat part of a celebratory birthday donut. 1705, finish up weekly assignments at work and coordinate an art install. 1738, head home and call dad on the phone. 1801, arrive at home and receive eager puppy kisses. C comes to greet me. 1812, cut up partially thawed chicken and learn about M's new Ninjago book from the library. 1814, M goes across the street to play with friends. 1815, C marches around the kitchen stopping every third step to spit out chewed nuts. I find the jar of nuts and put it out of reach. C notices that I moved his nuts and starts screaming. Puppy follows, sees trucks, and looks up every small pile of chewed nuts. I add the olive oil, chicken, lemon juice, pepper, salt, and mix spices to the cast iron. 1816, prepare salad for dinner while my husband, R, cuts a separate entry through the concrete in our basement. The walkout will allow us to have an artist-run gallery and residency out of our home. 1818, C asks for a glass of milk and immediately spills part of it by trying to add a lip. Puppy comes running in to help clean up the spilled milk. 1825, finish cooking. 1827, start a load of laundry. 1840, take C to the potty while playing tug of war with puppy's rope and cleaning the kids' room. 1842, chase after C who is hiding in the closet singing. 1843, take C across the street to pick up M. 1845, call R up for dinner. R comes up with pants caked in mud dish everyone up lemon pepper chicken, 
salad with spicy mixed greens, figs and tomatoes, brown rice, see cries that he doesn't have his plate yet. 1847, we call my stepson Jay, six, to say goodnight, but he doesn't answer the phone. The puppy eagerly licks up rice that C is dropping from his high chair. M eats a few pieces of chicken, drinks some milk, and leaves the rest of the food on his plate, which he returns to the fridge, and stacks above last night's leftovers. C eats a full plate of food. 1901, C pees on his chair in the kitchen, so I carry him to the potty, it's too late. 1902, C returns to the kitchen and eats the rest of the food on his plate. 1903, R returns to working on the side entry and doesn't emerge for hours except to talk to Jay when he calls. 1906, start another load of laundry and bring up the last load to fold. 1907, look for C. M informs me that he is in his bedroom. Look in the room and C is using the potty. Yay, C! 1910, brush up the kids, brush the kids' teeth, help them take a shower and switch the laundry out. 1942, Jay calls and we read books while I hold the phone and nurse C. 2011, I tuck M into bed and lay, lay down in C's toddler bed to nurse him. R is still cutting through the concrete right below us, so I turn up the white noise machine. Near full blast and sing lullabies over the white noise. 2103, I switch out the laundry. 2101, 2110, return emails. C is quiet and has fallen asleep. 2201, switch laundry. 2207, clean kitchen, pack kids' lunches and mine. Pack and unpack kids' backpacks, clean up the living room, cut and paint my nails. Work on training the puppy. 2323, fold laundry. 2346, switch out laundry, brush teeth, meditate, go to bed. Twelve thirty-three a.m. Washed the gunk off my hands. 12.35 a.m. Waiting for cash. 1.04 a.m. Got the cash finally on our way home. 2.30 a.m. Go to sleep. 7.55 a.m. Wake. Check if R is awake as well. Must meditate. 7.59 a.m. Tell T I will meditate in the kitchen. 8.01 a.m. Open flip clock app. Dive in deep meditation. 8.26 a.m., come out of meditation, speechless about where I go when doing it. 8.28 a.m., shower. Text Jay about meditation experience. 8.37 a.m., out of the shower and feel terrible R is still in her crib. Think how she is so much like us and I relax. I'm dripping and I get her in the room. 9.07 a.m., make pancakes, penapes. 9.28 a.m., eat penapes with R. T goes to studio. Day off means grocery store and day with R. 10.15 a.m. Go next door to M's with fresh penapes. R is afraid to, at first. She pretends to cry and lays on M's new rug. M is happy to see her. They start to play and run around the coffee table. 10.41 a.m. Back home and build blocks and bridges with R. M's world feels light and pastel. Happy she is next door. 10.56 a.m. Put load of laundry in. Go to grocery store and flower shop. Corn tortillas, bananas, blueberries, gluten-free bread, ground beef, more bars for R, cheddar bunnies, granola. 11.30 a.m. Stop and watch crane and dump truck uplifting the lot plot of land where an old sweet house used to be. She must have sold it. R is completely amused. I'm happy to stop and rest and watch. We eat veggie sticks. R hates the oil on her hands from the sticks. R gets scared from the sound of the dump truck and crane. R wants to be held and carried home. My fatigue returns. We leave. I carry R. R is still freaked out. As we get further away, R repeats, dump truck, dump truck, and begins to calm down. R is so very in tune. R sees airplanes from very far away. R hears them almost sooner than the visual. R is like an eagle. 12.53 p.m., R's nap time. Make bottle, usual concoction, change R. Big R is now here to watch little R. 1.06 p.m. Leave for total relaxation massage. So happy and excited for it. 3.27 p.m. Back home, feel the cleanse. Little R still sleeping. R is on the phone. 3.29 p.m. Meditate. 3.53 p.m. Back in the world, feel 100 times infinite. 4 o'clock p.m. R is up again. Text with T. 
He's happy to go to the beach. Impromptu beach trip. 4.10 p.m. Pack for the beach. Get R ready. We drop big R to the L train. 6.05 p.m. Arrive Tilden Beach. So sweet. T is upset about his email. Makes me annoyed and feels scattered. I get more upset because the day was in full reboot mode until that moment. Try to let it go. R comments many times about the birds. Birds so happy. Birds so happy. Changes my mood very fast. 6.35 p.m. R touches sand in new way and is very fascinated. R grabs the sand by big handfuls, turns her palms up, and slowly lets sand stream out. R does this many times. R smiles. I jump in the water solo. 6.45 p.m. Water is very warm and clear. Feels like a bath. Thankful for this moment. Feel a bit rushed. T crumples face on blanket. T still upset about email. R whimpers from the shore. This is my view from the ocean. 7 p.m. Out of water. R wants in. Go in water together. Barely wet her feet and she cries. It's the sound of the waves. R begins to learn love and hate. T feels better. Change R. R is very sandy and sleepy. Beepy. R is also very happy. R equals beach baby. Thankful for this. 7.30 p.m. Stop for beer. So happy to share a moment with T. It is far and rare to feel this with him. Thankfulness continues. Family hug. R likes it. R normally cries profusely when T and I hug. Growing. Growing. Elated. R runs in big circles around the little food court. I'm nervous when she passes where I can't see her. Look for her shadow. Tell self to chill out. Walk to car. Happy trio again. T has let it go. 8.15 p.m. Home again. T goes back to his studio. Feel very tired and overwhelmed. Mood changes. Feel angry that I decided to do nighttime with R solo. My fault. A bit excited to bathe her. 8.30 p.m. Kitchen is hot. Van is on. Cook sausages for pasta. Feel rushed and nervous. I try to calm down. Breathe deep. Can't control time. R notices nothing. R is super happy with her toys. R's toys. Giraffe. Car and Yoshi go to the beach. R is a blessing. 8.45 p.m. Bath time. Let bath almost run over. Fatigue again flows in. Feel terrible it's so late. R is super happy. Happy because she's happy. A blessing again. R is so light and full of light. Full of love and giggles. Go in bath with her. Forceful with the green comb to untangle her hair. More than usual. Makes me a little sad. Why am I in a rush? All feels distorted. Push through. Think about how big she is. How can she be two and a half? Enjoy the bath. Time is short. 9.15 p.m. Out of bath. On bed. Put coconut oil on R. R now wears long sleeve purple tie-dye from D, given at R's birth. Miss D so much. R is very sleepy. R talks of happy birds on the beach. 9.30 p.m. Now, finally, R is eating. Relief. R is not very hungry. R bites a few pieces. Move to living room to read a book. Light is dim. Feels nice. Cinematic. Read Owl's Snow. R has memorized the book. R eats. I ruffle R's hair to dry quicker. R doesn't notice. 9.52 p.m. Up to brush R's teeth. R says, brush your teeth, Gotti. Brush your teeth, I laugh. 10 p.m. Make bottle. Walk into R's room. R doesn't want to hold hands. Sit with R in the dark. I sing rock bye baby. R laughs through her bottle. I can see R in the dark and her sweet little grinning eyes. I ask if she had fun at the beach. R nods. I ask if she loves the sand. R nods. I ask if she's ready. R cozes up to me, her natural signal. Put her down in the crib, lay blanket on her. R is so cozy, I say, I love you, X many. Pat R's head and tiptoe out. My favorite part of the day, forever. Apartment is a mess, I don't care. I tidy a few things. See a call from brother P, I ignore it. Text from P, I text back and forth about Bali. P misses it very much. I support him. P sends out video of his trip. 
He asks me to watch first five minutes. I sit on the couch and watch the full 30 minutes. Send back text full of love. Feel connected and miss him. My body feels very heavy. 11.07 p.m. Lay in bed, deeply horizontal. Feels so good. No, I should close my eyes, but click on my phone. Fall asleep. Twelve thirty a.m. Receive a text from fifteen-year-old telling me good night. Two thirty a.m. Go to the bathroom. Four a.m. Cat wakes me up to be fed. Four thirty a.m. Cat wakes me up to be let outside. 6 a.m. Alarm sounds. I press snooze three times. 6.30 a.m. Nine-year-old wakes up, goes to the bathroom, turns the TV on. 6.45 a.m. 13 wakes up and joins nine-year-old. 7 a.m. Wake up, enter the kitchen, and put the tea kettle on. 7 a.m. 15-year-old wakes up. 7 to 7.45 a.m. Drink two cups of tea while checking on work emails and brief social media check as well. 7.45 to 8.05 a.m. Make breakfast for myself and children. 8.05 to 8.15 a.m. Take dog for short walk around the block. 8.15 to 9 a.m. Take 15 year old to volleyball camp. 9 to 9.30 a.m. Morning walk to the beach with nine and 13 year old. 9.30 to 10.15 a.m. Morning chores. Start a load of laundry, clean dining room table, do breakfast dishes, sweep and oversee children doing their chores. 10.15 to 10.30 a.m. Phone call with bank. 10.30 a.m. Drop 15-year-old at friend's house. 10.45 to 11.15 a.m. Play basketball in the driveway with nine-year-old. 11.15 to 11.45 a.m. Get ready for work. Hair, makeup, iron clothes. 11.45 to 1.15 p.m. Walk to work, consulting for a pre-college program at a local college. 1.15 to 1.35 p.m. Make a salad and eat lunch with my nine-year-old. 1.40 to 2.30 p.m. Swim in pool with nine-year-old. 2.30 to 2.45 p.m. Swim in pool with nine-year-old. 2.30 to 2.45 p.m. Make a nice tea and get dressed. 2.45 to 3.30 p.m. Pick up 15-year-old at volleyball camp. 3.30 to 4.30 p.m., rest time for everyone at home. Read a few chapters in my book, added a few poems in my chapbook, quick 20-minute cat nap. 4.30 to 5 p.m., finish a load of laundry, start another load, and make salad for dinner. 5 to 7 p.m., work with 15-year-old to deep clean her room while my husband prepares dinner and plays soccer with 9-year-old. 7 p.m., eat dinner. 7.30 to 8 p.m., have a glass of wine with my husband on the deck to catch up on the day and plan for tomorrow. 8 to 9.45 p.m. Watch a movie, epic, as a family. 9.45 to 10 p.m. Take a shower. 10 to 10.30 p.m. Write a poem for my chapbook. 10.30 to 11 p.m. Watch a show with my husband. 11 to 11.20 p.m. Have sex with my husband. 11.25 p.m. Go to bed. Midnight, sleep. 0010. Baby U wakes up for nursing. 0058. Baby U wets herself and the bed, change diaper and her clothes. She falls back asleep. 0338. Baby U wakes up, wants to nurse, falls asleep. 454. Baby U wakes up and wants to nurse again. I realize I've strained my back and I have a horrible pain whenever I move. 558. Baby U wakes up to nurse. 7. Baby who wakes up to nurse. I'm exhausted. She has been doing this for nine months. 8 a.m. Baby who wakes up to start her day. Her dad and her go to the living room and leave me in bed to snooze a bit more. 9.35. I wake up, dad. I wake up, dad and brings you to nurse while he makes breakfast. 9.46. We all have breakfast and spend time together. 10.20. Dad and gives me a back massage to ease the pain. Unsuccessful, but I'm very grateful. 10.45, I take a shower and we get dressed. 
11, go to gallery where I left my projection panel and take it to my studio. 11.40, have coffee with Ed and you. 12.15, put you to sleep, nurse her to sleep. 13.05, 13.05, I'm in bed with her all the time. You wakes up but falls back asleep. 14.11, you wakes up from her afternoon nap. 14.30, have lunch with granddad and grandmom. We live in the same house. 14.45, a call for a potential job, mural paintings for a Gothic building. 1430, go upstairs and play with you. 1600, play guitar for you. Go outside, 1615, go outside and play with you in the garden. It's a beautiful day. 1720, have a snack with you and listen to some music. 1807, meet dad and after work and go for a walk in town. 1915, have a beer in a pub and meet some friends to plan your first birthday celebration for tomorrow. 2010, come back home and have dinner. 2030, clean you before bed. 2045, put you to bed and nurse her to sleep. 2115, surf internet on my phone and search neo-gothic mural ornaments, ideas for the potential job. 2245, put my phone down and fall asleep. Oh, 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 sleep. I am. Wake up to daughter vomiting in bed between me and my partner, her father. This is the third vomit of the night, so we already have system in place where I hold her upright and strip off vomit-covered PJs while he gets towels. He lays a big towel down underneath her and changes my pillowcase while I nurse her. She drinks a huge gulp of water and falls back asleep in my arms. I lay her back down between us and we all fall back asleep. 1.55 a.m. Wake again to fourth vomit of the night. Repeat our cleanup procedure, more water gulping. 2.20 a.m., wake for fifth vomit of the night. Repeat cleanup procedure, this time with crankier child who takes some time to fall back asleep while rolling between us, nursing intermittently. 3.15 a.m., sixth and final vomit of the night. Daddy takes daughter to the sofa and bedroom and she falls asleep in a more upright position, lying on his chest and shoulder. We all finally sleep. 8 a.m., we all wake up. Daughter is chipper and very thirsty. Daddy fills sippy cup while I nurse and chat in bed with daughter. She gulps lots of water. 8.20 a.m. We get up for the day. Daddy makes coffee for us both while daughter runs around. Says she doesn't want to eat, but I prepare flapjacks and cut up strawberries anyway. 8.30 a.m. Daughter asks for milk in one of her tea set cups, which I'm reluctant to give because she always spills it. I pour it anyway, and a few minutes later, it's indeed spilled in her play kitchen. Clean up the mess. 8.40 a.m., eat breakfast. 8.55 a.m., change diaper and get daughter dressed. 9 a.m., get myself dressed, wash face, brush teeth. 9.10 a.m., brush daughter's teeth while daddy gets dressed. 9.25 a.m., we all get in the car to drive to house renovation site to check in with our carpenter. 10.05, discuss building details with Carpenter while nursing daughter, holding her hand while she explores the construction zone. 10.30, drive around the corner to coffee shop, get a muffin and lemonade to share with daughter. Daddy gets coffee, play at the table and watch customers. 10.50 a.m., get in car to drive home. Daddy sits in back next to daughter to keep her company while I drive. 11.25 a.m., arrive home and nurse while sitting on back porch and discussing more renovation details. Meanwhile, texting with co-owners or property about some joint decisions. 11.50 a.m. Make lunch for myself and daughter while daddy fixes himself some cereal. She refuses to eat, wants to run around instead. 11 or 12.05, daughter seems too tired to eat, so go into bedroom to lie down with her, but she perks up. We lounge on the bed, nursing a little, playing a little. 12.15 p.m., change diaper. 12.20 p.m., put daughter in the stroller for a walk to get her to sleep. Works almost instantly. 1 o'clock p.m., return home, daughter still sleeping. Bring her stroller inside to the entryway to continue sleeping there in the cross breeze. 1.05 p.m., check email. 1.35 p.m., sit down to transcribe some of this intro into computer. 1.45 p.m., read article about toddler tantrums. 
155, make notes about an art project I'm developing and presenting later this week. 2.05 p.m., pay a bill and tidy up counter. 2.10 p.m., gather some materials and tools for art project. 2.25 p.m., eat a snack. 2.35 p.m., call a Subaru dealer to have them walk me through an automatic window reset protocol, problem solved in one minute. 2.40 p.m., sit down to read and put feet up for a remainder of nap time. 3.15 p.m., daughter naps longer than usual. Start dinner prep with my partner, including a meal train meal for friends with a newborn. 3.40 p.m., chat and putter with my partner. 3.55 p.m., daughter wakes up, daddy gets her, but she immediately asks for mama. 4 p.m., change diaper and snuggle for several minutes on the couch. 4.10 p.m., start cooking meal train meal. Daughter plays with her toys nearby. 4.30 p.m., meal finished, pack it up to take to friends. Put shoes on and grab purse to leave house. Daughter stays home with my partner. 4.55 p.m. Arrive at friend's house with meal. Meet their sweet, tiny new human and chat with my friend, the mom, to hear about the birth, etc. I hold the baby, we chat more. 5.40 p.m. Leave to return home. 6 p.m. Arrive home. My partner is exhausted and stressed and he lets me know it, so I scoop up my daughter as soon as I'm through the door. 6.05 p.m. Start cooking simple pasta and leftover dinner for myself and daughter while my partner finishes packing for a work trip. 6.15 p.m. Set dinner on tray. Try to get daughter interested in eating, but she still has little appetite. I eat my own dinner while nursing her at the table. 6.25 p.m. My partner is ready to go on his trip. We get up and say goodbyes with a big family hug. 6.35 p.m., partner out the door, daughter watches his truck drive out of the driveway. I clean up my dinner plate and do dishes. 6.45 p.m., daughter wants to watch a TV show, which we only do when she's sick. I say yes and set up the iPad for her. I finish dishes while the show starts. 6.55 p.m., bring daughter's now cool dinner over to her and she finally eats while watching her show. <clears throat> 7.15 p.m., show is over. She brings her plate to the sink while I grab iPad and several books for bedtime. 7.20 p.m. We both brush teeth and wash hands and faces, then get into pajamas and into bed. We read six books while daughter nurses off and on, continue to nurse off and on. 7.55 p.m. Daughter falls asleep. I am so tired that I stay in bed and read the news, scroll Instagram, and text with my partner on my iPad. 8.35 p.m put my iPad down and fall asleep. <clears throat> 5.30 to 6 a.m. We are staying at my husband's mother's at mother and stepfather's house in New Jersey so we can spend time with his grandmother who's visiting from Cleveland. I love this house, but there are windows near the ceiling that let in the sun the moment it rises. I put my head under a blanket to try to keep sleeping. I brought a sleep mask, but can never really sleep with it on. 6.55 a.m. Our two-year-old calls for mama but keeps sleeping. 7.05. I get out of bed, put on a bra, and head out to the kitchen where I drink a delicious coffee and hang out with my mother-in-law as she tries to get a water stain off her cabinet. 7.30 a.m. The toddler wakes up. We perform a complicated maneuver where my husband and I move her, recently toilet trained, mid-poop to her traveling potty so her 101-year-old great-grandmother can use the bathroom. She usually still nurses in mourning, but hasn't asked since we've been staying here, so I don't mention it. 8 a.m. We eat breakfast cooked by my mother-in-law, pack up the hundreds of bags we brought for our three-day weekend, and load the car. 9 a.m. We say goodbye, which is bittersweet, and head out to Sesame Place, a trip we plan to capitalize on. How much closer to it my mother-in-law's is than our apartment in Queens. <clears throat> 10 a.m., the toddler screams, we made it! We use bathrooms, apply sunscreen, wait in the first of many lines, and she finally boards a carousel by 11 o'clock. I get very motion sick, so her dad rides the rides with her while I wave and take pictures. She is surprisingly chill about waiting in all the lines. 11.10 a.m., we immediately cave and buy her a stuffed cookie monster rather than waiting for the end of the day. 
She wants a Zoe doll in the moment, but we convince her to stick to the plan, which has always been cookie. 11.30 a.m., I am the one who wants a snack first. 12 p.m., we eat the very random foods we packed for lunch and finish just in time to see the special Sesame Street musical performance. The toddler is in awe. 1 p.m., we pace back and forth with a resistant toddler trying to get a stroller nap. Eventually, she falls asleep for about 20 to 30 minutes. She usually naps for around two hours, which we knew wouldn't happen today, but this short of a nap doesn't bode especially well for the rest of the day. 2 p.m., the toddler notices a giant rubber duck atop the tallest water ride and is desperate to get close to him. We don't believe it, but she's game for the ride, so we do it. It's a little terrifying, but mostly fun. We get done just in time to watch the parade, which blows her little mind. 3.45, the toddler is very fussy. No nap. Ice cream fails to really cheer her up. She doesn't want to do anything except the two water rides that are closed because somebody pooped in them. Throws a fit. We watch the Sesame Street show for the second time and then another show, which was great. We sit for some snacks we packed and Bert and Ernie and Zoe magically appear to take photos, give hugs and save the day. 5 p.m. We get in line for the last water ride we can go on and the toddler has a tantrum because the one tub tube that's safe for her to go on is orange and not pink. So we have to go, so we have to back off the line with giant rubber floats. Then we hit the little wave pool and have a blast. The day is saved again. All the food options are closed by the time we drag ourselves away, so we wind up at a Taco Bell at 7.30 p.m., the toddler's usual bedtime. She's never had fast food before. I order her a burn bur bean burrito, but she mostly eats her dad's crunchy beef taco. As soon as we load into the car, I discover that the reason no one has updated me about the outdoor class we're taking tomorrow is my registration never went through. As I deal with that and my husband tries to fix the car sound system to play the toddler's music class songs, still in the Taco Bell parking lot, the toddler announces she has to poop. Rather than haul back inside, we set her up with the travel potty next to the car. She does not, in fact, poop, but prolongs our departure by a good 20 minutes. 8.20 to 9.25 p.m. The toddler talks nonstop despite best efforts to get her to sleep in the car. She is so amped up. She finally agrees to put on her new sleep mask bought for this purpose, and after she fiddles with it for a few, it winds up working and she finally falls asleep. 10 p.m. We return home and transfer the sleeping toddler to her crib. This rarely is successful, but tonight it sticks. 10.05 p.m. I unpack the five packages of gluten-free bread my mother-in-law and her sister got for my husband for the two days we were out in New Jersey and all the rest of our gear. Then send many work emails I haven't written over the past three days. I pack a bag for our outdoor class tomorrow morning, crossing my fingers. I haven't missed any important messages telling us what to bring for our first day. I gather an assortment of goods for tomorrow evening when three girlfriends and I will hold our annual red, regit, oh, re giftmas in July, re giftmas in July dinner, where we trade gifts others have given us that we don't want. We used to do it just after the holidays, which made a lot of sense, but our schedules were so crazy that we wound up pushing last year's dinner back so many times it finally happened in July. I suddenly remembered to rescue the air plants I accidentally left submerged in water when we left for the long weekend. They seem fine. I'm supposed to water a neighbor's plants today, but I think they'll live until tomorrow. 11 p.m., I drink a million glasses of water and get ready for bed. 11.15 p.m., I climb into bed for a few minutes of mindless TV, but wind up reading about the horrible things the president tweeted while we were on Sesame Street, before forcing myself to put down the phone and go to sleep. 5.58 a.m., wake and check phone for news. Lie in bed thinking of what needs to be done today. 6.30 a.m., I'm nervous about today's workload, so get up for shower and make coffee. Sort emails. I enjoy the quiet house before anyone else awakes. Put cheesy 70s music on. Eat yogurt. 7.35 a.m. Wake up nine-year-old E. It's the school holidays, but we need to get ready to pick up her 12-year-old brother C from the airport where he's flying in after a week in Wellington. 
I forgot to give E a bath last night, so I run the bath now. I create social media posts for work while she's in the bath. I wash her hair and send more emails. 8.05 a.m., I check my phone. 13 missed calls from Wellington, problems with C's flight. He's now not coming home today. I rearrange my morning schedule and get E out of the bath. 8.15 a.m., I put on moisturizer, foundation, mascara, and blush. Pack bag, drive E to my mom's house, realize she didn't have breakfast as I drive into work. 8.34 a.m., arrive at work for meetings and usual tasks. 12.30 p.m., mom drop, Mom drops E off to my work. She plays on her device while I work for the next two hours. I add that to the device guilt in my brain. 2.30 p.m., we leave work. I take my laptop and files with me so I continue at home. I didn't have time for lunch. 2.45 p.m., pick up a na nationwide photography magazine on the way home. One of my photos features shortlisted in their annual competitions nature category. Mixed feelings as I head home. I generally don't do nature photography, so I feel weirdly frustrated by it. 3 p.m., husband gets home at the same time as me and E. 3.12 p.m., call from C in Wellington. He's now coming home on Wednesday. We all miss him. I sit at my computer. My office is in our lounge. I keep working. 4.30 p.m., E rem reminds me it's art lesson time. She announced last term that she'd be running art classes in the holidays, and I signed up. We walk, around the we walk around the house, each of us drawing an item in each room. We have to guess what each other has sketched. In C's room, we both draw his shoes. Lots of laughing. She's a pretty good teacher. 5, 10 p.m., my husband asks what we need from the shops. Bread, carrots, apples, corn, ham. 5, 15 p.m., while the shopping's getting done, I start post-production on three photo photos I made at my city's main sports stadium yesterday. It's being demolished after severe earthquake damage in 2011. The demolition makes for some interesting composition. 5.45, I'm not on dinner duty tonight. It's toasted sandwich night. I keep on with the post-production. The light was a bit dull on the day I made the photo, so I work on them in black and white. They tell an interesting story. 6, 10 p.m., we all eat in front of the television watching a series about glass blowing. 6, 40 p.m., I have a glass of wine. I can't stop watching the glass blowing. I spend a long time thinking whether an accident prone person such as myself should try it. It's hypnotic to watch. I should clean the kitchen, but glass blowing is much more interesting. 8.37 p.m., I drag myself to the computer. I have to research an article I'm writing on landscape photography in New Zealand. 9 p.m., my husband puts E to bed. She comes and gives me a squeezy hug of the best kind. 10.06 p.m., I'm too tired to concentrate anymore. I head to bed. So thank you all so much for coming. That is 15 readings, including Lenka. This was an absolutely stunningly beautiful event. I'm so floored by how many of you came and stayed and listened. I want to thank everyone again who has supported this book. Um, we almost made it halfway there at page 171. We're very close. We're just about 20 pages off from halfway through the book. And um, as we can tell, each and every one of these accounts um, is so unique and funny and sad and scary and lovely and humorous and all the things that motherhood and mothering can be. Um, and I'm so proud to have um, been able to make this book part of Labor, Motherhood, and Art in 2020. I just want to say that we, what we said at the very beginning of this reading, which is that we do hope that we're able to open Labor, Motherhood, and Art in 2020 again. Um, we have extended the exhibition through August 16th. Um, we hope that that gives time for people to be able to come into the museum and see the exhibition. If not, the exhibition is now fully online. 
We have, a, we have multiple video walkthroughs of the exhibition now online, as well as installation um, shots of, uh, in a digital gallery form. So please go to uam.nmsu.edu to see the video walkthroughs of the exhibition and see this piece installed in its grandeur. We have this as an installation in a very large piece that becomes this large quilt of all of these stories, all of these daily accounts. Um, and I really um, hope that you are all able to visit, but if not, that is one way to see the show, no matter where you are, no matter how much time you can spend with it, because you can spend all the time in the world online with it. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for supporting. We really appreciate you. Lenka appreciates you. This was a beautiful event. Thank you. <laughs>